What's the first thing you think of when you think of Germany? That's right, castles. Should be castles. And wine, maybe. And so to explore some castles and wine, we drove all the way from the north of Germany down here to Mosel Valley to do some castle hopping. Take in the scenery and just explore part of Germany that we haven't seen before. So join us as we explore a variety of beautiful castles and see and also drink a variety of different wine. Well, welcome to Mosel Valley. This is the first time for us visiting Mosel Valley. The Mosel is a river in Germany and the whole area is well known for its production of excellent wines. Mosel Valley also has a fascinating history of different tribes settling in the area, then being a part of the Roman Empire. Later on, Mosel Valley played an important role in medieval times in which the castles were built that we're about to visit. This is the foot walk to Burg Elz Castle. It was supposed to be very cloudy and I think it turned out better than expected. Oh, look, see the castle. <laughs> I mean, the castle looks excellent. It's a very, very picturesque and beautiful castle. It looks really majestic, standing on its own there in the middle of the forest. So this is Burg Elz. It's pretty beautiful, pretty big. And we think it's quite underrated. We've only just heard about it. We've seen the pictures and we thought we have to go. One reason this castle is so beautiful is because it was never destroyed by anyone and especially not the French, who may or may not have destroyed a lot of castles here in Germany. Well, it's a bit sad that it's still under construction. Yeah, right now there's a little bit of construction going on, but it's, it's still very beautiful. Hand higher. <laughs> I didn't know it was the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah, this is the German Eiffel Tower equivalent. Let's finally go and yeah. have a look inside. This is cool, eh? This is really cool. Cute, there's a little cafe. This castle has been in possession of the Elts family for more than 850 years. It's actually the same family still who lives here. That's it's really crazy. cool. The castle once belonged to a big family and there was a dispute between three brothers that owned the castle. One of the family branches died and the other bought the castle from the third branch of the family. So that's the family who still owns this castle now. It was the golden lion, the silver lion and the buffalo horns. <laughs> Those were the three branches. And who owns them now? Probably the golden lion, uh, eh? The golden lion, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> who would have expected that? <laughs> So imagine waking up to this view every morning because people still live here and then you can just, you know, go up to your balcony, drink your morning latte, try not to get seen by all the tourists. Mm -hmm. Try not to get filmed by Zoe and Simon. <laughs> this is probably one of the most picturesque castles that you can find anywhere in it's the world. definitely the most picturesque castle I've ever seen. Yes. Say that. And Zoe has seen at least three <laughs> <Five> castles. castles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just very cute. I mean, look at it. You mean look me? at it. No, no, I mean the castle. Oh. So what do you get for your 14 euros in Borg Elts? <laughs> <laughs> you get a look inside the castle. You can visit the uh, treasury on your own. And then there's a guided walk through the interior of the castle. You can see maybe six, seven different, different rooms from two houses. The third house is the one where actually people still live. They have some weapons, even though they didn't fight, but they still had some weapons they show you. A kitchen, 
and the living room, <laughs> their trial room, their sleeping quarters, also a toilet, which I found very interesting. And a lot of it is still in its original form or just kept same as original. And you can also see some suits of armor, which weigh up to 60 kilos. I think it was 100% worth it to come here. Um, I learned a lot about this castle in particular and medieval life. Would you like to live in this castle or? It's a bit in the middle of nowhere. I prefer to live close to a train station. Okay, yeah, there's there's um, definitely no train transport. station here. Also a supermarket would be nice. Supermarket inside the castle maybe. It is worth coming here. It's not too cheap, it's 14 euros per person. But that family has to make a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, just imagine trying to have to pay for heating and electricity, yeah. Wi-Fi in that castle. They must have some big bills, <laughs> yeah. I am so hungry. We should have eaten breakfast this morning, but I ordered some asparagus with roasted potatoes. It's asparagus season, so you're practically obliged to order asparagus in Germany. And it's very delicious. How's your asparagus? It's a good start to the trip. If you don't know, asparagus is one of those foods, in Germany especially, that people worship. It's seasonal, so it's only available for a short amount of time. And when it is available, it's the only thing that Germans like to eat. Even if you don't like it, you pretty much have to eat it because otherwise you'll be excluded from society. And so this is the white gold. You eat it with a nice hollandaise sauce. And some potatoes. And some potatoes. And, and also, also some, some ham, ham, normally. Yes. We just got it with some potatoes and I also got a schnitzel, which is my preferred way of eating it. <laughs> <laughs> we just went to this place which serves the world's smallest ice cream scoop. Mosel Valley, one of the 13 wine areas of Germany, famous for its Riesling. And so this is Riesling ice cream, which is an interesting flavor. Let's see if it should be famous too. I kind of like it. I would like it to be stronger. If you make a white wine ice cream, then you have to bring the full flavor, I think. And maybe some alcohol as well. I don't know whether I would have been able to tell its reasoning. It's a bit weird, but it doesn't taste bad. It's a bit like an iced white wine spritzer. So I don't know if this will be my favorite flavor of ice cream, but it's interesting to try. We are now walking through Beilstein. Beilstein is probably one of the cutest cities, not cities, towns you've ever seen. And one of the cutest towns definitely in the Mosel Valley area. It's known for its prettiness and they also have a castle. So on this castle hopping tour, of course we can't miss it. It's called Metternich Castle. I don't know if it's really a castle or more like ruins of the castle. Yeah. The pictures, you, know, you can't be quite sure. Yeah, many of the castles are kind of ruins as well. I mean, it does cost. <laughs> Two in one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does cost a lot to rebuild a castle. Yeah. I think haven't done it myself. And but a lot of them were destroyed. Yeah. So you have to hike up for ten minutes to the castle, and then you could enjoy a nice panoramic view from the terrace. This could be us. That's me, and that's you. In. 10 to 20 years. I like the idea of having a coffee here and maybe a little wine. Hmm. I mean, this little town is very cute, but it is also just basically this small part here. So, you know, it's still impressive and nice to see, I'm, I'm just saying. It's spring in Germany right now, which means that weather-wise, you don't know what to expect. It means that I can easily get sunburned sitting in the sun for five minutes, but also, so he needs a hat. Yeah, and it's quite windy up here, even though it might not look like it. We've climbed up the one tower that you can climb up to in this castle ruin. Okay, we underestimated how far you can go up, actually, so I don't know. 
there's no end. There's actually no end. Aha, uh -huh. well, this is the end now, yeah. Oh, hello, nice view. It's a real panoramic view, so you can see all of the surroundings and how the Mosel flows through this valley. From up here you can really see how the small towns are situated directly at the river and then you've got some vineyards, <coughs> bless <Sorry>. you, <laughs> and then you've got all of the vineyards around that town and it's just very cute and idyllic. Yeah, I mean spring is not the best time to visit those vineyards I think because they all look a bit flat because nothing's grown yet but they still look nice. Can they look nicer? Maybe, Probably. Maybe. So after this strenuous hike, he has a well-deserved break in the sun with some sect. Okay, so our verdict from Metternich Castle. I would say there's not that much to see and it, and it is a ruin, but it only costs three euros to enter. And it's a really great viewpoint. Yes, a and really good one. And you can have a nice coffee up there, a little sparkling wine. We're driving to a bridge right now, and it's not just any bridge. It's a very scary bridge. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see about that. It's a suspension bridge. It's not built for tourists or anything. It's just a public suspension bridge that uh, kind of connects two towns. The bridge has got 15,000 reviews on Google Maps. 15,000? Yeah. That's a lot for this area. Yeah, for this area, that's a lot. So before we go to the bridge, there's one thing that Zoe has to do. <laughs> Off she goes, never to be seen again. So in order to get to the bridge, it's another walk. 30 minutes, round about 2.2 kilometers. And we left our car here at a very expensive parking space. We don't know yet if it's 8 euros for one hour or 8 euros for four hours, which would kind of make a difference. <laughs> eight hours for one, uh, eight euros, <laughs> eight euros for one hour. That would be way too much. You and your white shoes. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm not best prepared either, but at least I have my hiking shoes because I still had them in the car. <laughs> yeah, not the best decision. So it's a nice hike through a forest. We've got a small, cute river, nice nature. I mean, it's classic German forest, I would say, actually. Yeah. It's not super special or anything. It's nice, it's idyllic. Yeah, um, you can hear some birds. It's kind of warm and it's kind of cold. So that's why I'm wearing three layers and I'm sweating, but I'm still slightly cold. The weather is just <laughs> unpredictable and very strange. very strange. And if you take a slight detour from the path, then you can get to enjoy this view of the Windows 95 wallpaper. This is the exact location. Don't fact check me, but just trust me. This bridge is bigger than I expected. It is actually quite impressive. Don't look down. It is cool. It is cool. It's not very wide, this whole bridge. No, but it feels quite safe because you can see it's secured. Yeah, so. there's at least one rope tied to it, so that's good. Simon is a little bit scared. No, nah, just a bit, maybe. <laughs> It's the first thing ever where Simon is more scared than me. <laughs> I have to enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I mean, we are quite high up. Yeah. I must say that. It's not for people who are afraid of heights. Yeah. So lucky you're not one of them, eh? No, good. Turns out I'm slightly afraid of heights, but only in this kind of scenario. But you did manage to yes. cross the bridge. So. That's good. So I think, yeah, it's always the fact that when I can see what's underneath while I'm walking, I think my brain kind of switches a little bit and then suddenly it thinks about where I am exactly. <laughs> but for example, when I'm standing 
on top of a high cliff or in any other tall place. I don't mind. It's fine. Interesting. Third one. Tonight we're sleeping in this castle. 